Good afternoon and welcome to the 2020 Economic Recession and Preparation Channel. I'm your host, Tony. Thank you for joining me on this Super Tuesday, July 21st, 2020. The dog days of summer and also the dog days of this economy. Um, Today's post is concerning the economic impact that this sickness continues to have resurgence on nearly three-fourths of the United States. And today on NBCNews.com, political analyst and a survey conducted says nearly three quarters of Americans say they worry about economic loss due to the sickness in the latest NBC News Survey Monkey weekly tracking poll. As of today, July 21st, less than a quarter of adults believe the U.S. economy is excellent or good as this pandemic continues to ravage. America, and we need in cases around the world. Overall, just 2% called the economy excellent, quote unquote, with 21% calling it good. The majority, 43%, called it fair, while 32% rated it poor. Now, it's unclear what was the sample size of this survey. But when asked what issues matter most to them, each subgroup across economic age, education, and racial lines said jobs and the economy, except for Democrats, liberals, or those with postgraduate degrees. And these groups, health care rated first, followed by jobs and the economy. Well, same thing. If you don't have jobs, you don't have economy, you don't have a health care system, okay? <laughs> with the unemployment rate above 11%, as a matter of fact, the unemployment rate is ticking up again. Okay, remember it reached that all-time high two months ago at 14.5-15%. That's just the official numbers, okay? 74% of adults say they're concerned that this sickness will have a negative impact on their household finances. And 91% of adults said this sickness will have a negative effect on the economy. Now, let me repeat that. 91% of adults said that this sickness will have a negative effect on the economy. Millions of Americans have received uh, stimulus checks in the early weeks of this sickness to kind of buffer the effects of this sickness as they stayed at home or sheltered in place or work from home. But now that these stimulus checks are wearing off and now that the second talks of a second stimulus checks are stalling in in Congress, particularly the House and the Senate. Uh, things are looking to be very dire. You know, next week is the deadline that everybody, every economist, all of us are looking for Friday, July 31st. It's the deadline when the extra $600 a week could be not extended. And also the moratorium on the rents and the mortgages could be ending as well next Friday if Congress does not extend it through August. So the Democrats have been pushing for more direct payments as part of the next round of this sickness relief bill. Uh, But they're having trouble. And now even our president admits that this sickness is going to be worse than he first thought and that it's going to take even longer to recover from this sickness than initially thought. So now we have muddy waters here with this economy. Things are in no way getting better. Nearly nine in 10 Americans now worry about the U.S. economy completely collapsing. And that transcends party lines. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican, Democrat, Independent, Libertarian, Green Party. Nine out of ten Americans now worry that the U.S. economy could be in danger of collapse. And, and I guess you can th- throw my name in there, too. You can say that I'm worried about that. We know that the collapse is coming. With three-fourths also fear their communities reopen too soon. They reopened this economy too soon. What little that was left of the economy, particularly in retail, particularly in hospitality, particularly in transportation and healthcare. So as a result, we are now facing a more dire situation. And because both this sickness and this economy is not getting better, we're going to be hit with a double whammy, a double whammy of not having enough money to pay our bills not having enough money to sustain a country who de- who is now dependent upon stimulus, either the corporate is dependent upon stimulus, the individual is dependent upon stimulus, and we're also going to be faced with rising taxes as local governments and cities try to deal with 
revenues falling. There's been a mass exodus from cities like New York City. A lot of the upper middle class and super rich people are moving out of New York City because of the high taxes. And that has left a tax revenue drain um, in a lot of these cities. In Chicago, in New York, in L.A., uh, in, 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 in Houston, Dallas, you name it. St. Louis, Denver, Cleveland. A lot of these cities are left with tax drains. And so what are they going to do? They're going to try to raise taxes higher, property taxes, car taxes, uh, land taxes, you name it. They're going to raise taxes higher, but the money is just not there. It's like squeezing blood from a turnip. Many of you have already reported to me that there's food shortages going on in these stores. Uh, and the stores that are pretending to have a lot of supply are going to run out as soon as they don't get stimulus. A lot of airlines are going to go bankrupt. As you know, United Airlines is laying off 20,000 workers along with American Airlines. Delta Airlines said they're laying off workers starting in September. Okay, so the airline, a lot of airlines are going to go bankrupt. And we're only going to be left with one or two strong airlines in the United States. Also, in addition to a food, a coin shortage, we also could be looking at a black swan event, and that's what Americans are worried about as well in terms of financial. What if the power goes out for a few weeks because of this sickness? People don't report to the plants, don't report to work, okay? What if we have another attack, okay, on this country? What if something comes out of left field? It would just be like the domino effect, the tip over this already leveraged economy, okay? And you know what? I've been thinking more and more about this, and I think that they want this economy to just completely collapse. Everybody on all sides, Democrats, Republicans, because they're spending reckless money. When have you ever seen a time, other than the Great Depression and the New, the new Deal that followed, where FDR spent all the money with the, um, that started all these organizations, um, well, we're just spending reckless money on both sides and people remember they're getting the money off the top. This is the truth. You know that your, your, your representatives in Congress are getting their money off the top. The lobbyists, the special interest, the triangle, the iron triangle, as they call it, made up of lobbyists, special interests and the government. They're getting their money off the top and they're leaving you with breadcrumbs, a $1,200 stimulus check. $1,200 doesn't even cover rent in certain cities here nowadays, okay? For a two-bedroom apartment, you can't even find that in certain cities like D.C. and New York and Philly and Boston, okay? Or even afford a mortgage on that, okay? But yet they're giving us breadcrumbs. And so this is why the system is going to collapse because there's corruption not only from without, there's corruption within this system. And that's just the truth. You know I tell you the 100% truth here. And that's what's really going on. So... This sickness crisis is is also, even though it is going to be a bad and chaotic time, a depression for many Americans um, in America, a, a time of limited resources, there's going to be some people that's going to profit from this. And you know that those people who they are, the top 1% is going to profit. Uh, the Amazons of the world, the Microsofts, the technology revolution that's taking place that they've been, they've been bragging about on the stock market for the last five, ten years, okay? Those people like that are going to profit from this downturn and this, quite frankly, depression, okay? So they're expecting that. So we have to prepare. We have to invest in ourselves. We have to invest in our families. We have to be more self-sufficient, and that's why I preach that that we have to be self-sufficient because right now you just seen here that um, all the majority of Americans don't have confidence in this economy. Okay. And that is across party lines. That's across racial lines. That's across economic and education lines. Okay. So if we don't have confidence in this economy, then that means we have to prepare for a collapse, a downturn. And the only way to prepare for a collapse is to be more self-sufficient. Many people have told me they've started to grow gardens, container gardens, or full-grown gardens, okay? That takes time, okay? Many people have told me that they're starting to get their security in order to protect the families, you know, in certain various ways. Um, that takes time. Many people have told me that, you know, they've, they've gotten more bottled water and more resources because there's going to be a food shortage that's going to happen because crops are not growing like they used to uh i've been to many rural farms in virginia and and and, and florida and georgia and crops are not yielding as much produce as they used to the soil's not because remember we're going through all these scientific changes like global warming the grand solar minimum uh and the crops are not yielding as much and so we're going to be faced with a tsunami of different things when this thing decides to finally cave in and i believe it will probably in early late september early october this this economy is just going to be done 
and they're going to admit to you, the media is going to admit to you that we are in a, a depression, okay? It takes two quarters of negative GDP to be in a depression, uh, and quite frankly, we're going to get it after this one and then the next one in the fourth quarter. So by 2021, around March 2021, we're going to be in this um, big, big trouble, depression worldwide. So get prepared. Stay prepared, my friends. I'll continue to keep you informed. Be blessed and have a great day as we head into Hump Day Wednesday.